let the interview begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Full of Nerds podcast. I'm here with Sarah Grace Sanders. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for being here. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you could take a bit of time out of your busy day to be on the show. So thank you. Of course. Uh, so obviously you're an actor. So why did you choose acting as your main career choice? Um, I wouldn't say I chose it. More like it kind of found me or I couldn't really escape from it. Okay. Um, you know, growing up, I always was performing and, you know, wanted to dress up and be different characters and kind of like escape my mundane reality growing up in a small town in Maryland. And then, you know, I took dance classes, was in drama club, went off to college, um, got a degree in economics and tried to do the whole like corporate Uh, thing when I first moved to New York, but I just felt like something was missing or like, you know, I wasn't pursuing what I really wanted to be doing. I was doing something that I thought was safe and was that other people respected and my parents were happy with. So I think it was like a year, the market crashed 2008. And I was like, you know what? I was in real estate at the time that kind of fell through. And I was like, this is the time I didn't want to live a life of regrets. I didn't want to like live my life and then look back 10 years later and be like, oh my God, I regret not doing that. So I was like, okay, let's just do this. Um, And yeah, it was a lot of hustle, a lot of hard work. So I wouldn't, like, if anyone like is trying to, wants to be an actor, it is a tough career, a tough yeah, I've business. Heard. <laughs> you know, if you're not, if your parents aren't in it, if you don't have, you know, connections. So um, it kind of chose me, but I, you know, it's, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's so fun. That's great. Well, at least you found your perfect job that you're happy in yeah. now. So that's good to her. Yeah. Um, so obviously you're in Cobra Kai in season two, episode eight, I believe. I think yes. it is. Yeah, yeah so- you're right. Yeah. So how did you land? Obviously, you land the role like anything else, like audition and whatnot. So what was it like being on the set of Cobra Kai? Oh, my God, it was so amazing. I've been on, um, you know, a lot of New York sets and New York's very like, go, go, go. Everyone's kind of in a bad mood. There's traffic <laughs> or like it's gray and dreary. And like New York is very different Yeah. Um, when you're used to that. But like going down to Atlanta, like it was just so fun. It was so nice. I have a lot of family down there. So I was with my aunt and uncle, flew down, went to set and everyone was just so nice. And then, you know, it was kind of like, it was a long day of just waiting around because that's what okay. you do yeah. on these sets. But I, you know, opened my little trailer door and I'm talking with Alex Collins who played Graham I made friends with the other women who played Johnny's dates and yeah one of us me and Shakira had the same acting teacher in New York oh wow um and then I became friends with Amor who plays one of the dates so it was just like and Kylie Del Rey who is back again from season one like it was just a really fun day you know it's a really uh sense of camaraderie oh, like we really, all want to yeah. do our best we want to make the scene in the show great um, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad to hear that. So obviously you mentioned your scene is with Johnny. So obviously right. you got to meet Zabka. So were yeah. you a Karate Kid fan growing up or not? No, that's the funny thing is I don't think I ever saw the movie really. I may have been like a tiny bit too young, oh. but also like I wasn't into karate growing up. I was into like Barbies and like, yeah. I don't know, My Little Ponies. Like that's <laughs> just what it wasn't my, I was not the target audience for that show, that movie. But then, you know, I hadn't really heard of the show. I knew it was a new show shooting in Atlanta. Yeah. You know, I had auditioned for like the MacGyver show that shoots down there. So I was like, oh, it's like a spinoff show, a new show. No one really knew about it. And then I was like, let me, I should, I need to watch the movie. Um, just to get a backstory. So I watched yeah. it and I was like, wow, this movie's really good. Like it is such a good film. And you know, everyone knows like wax on, wax off. Like everyone knows that's Karate Kid. Yeah. And like catching the fly with chopsticks. Like there's things I could I could tell you that, but like, did I really know the nitty gritty of the movie? No, but like watching it, I was like, wow, it really gives you a different perspective. Yeah, of course. Cause obviously Zabka's character is obviously completely different in Cobra Kai. He's changing yeah. as a character. Obviously- yeah. He's trying to find a girl within your scene. So he's trying to balance his life out a bit, I suppose. Right. Yeah. So did you watch the movie before you were on the set or after? Yes, I did. I watched it before I went to set. Um, And I think I had tried to watch season one. I think I tried to watch season one before I went down there too. Um, Yeah. So I wanted to be like well-versed in everything and just, you know, know the history. 
Um, but I think, you know, the writers and creators did a great job of just taking his character, those two characters from that movie, and then recreating this entire show 30 years later. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Teenagers, yeah. and then the rivalry is still there. And I thought it, and like giving it more of Johnny's perspective, because you didn't really get that in the film. Yeah, because it was Daniel's uh, story back then, and now it's a bit of both now, and it, yeah, I totally get that. Right, yeah. right, yeah. And obviously, your character is a specific character in the show, but would you like to return in some form if it was possible for your character? Oh my God, totally. Yeah. yeah, like I would love to go back. I mean, basically, I mean, mainly because it's such a fun set and they're just so fun and it's a really fun show. And I'm so like, when I was on it and was telling all my friends and family like, hey, watch Cobra Kai, I'm in this. It was on YouTube, Red. So no yeah. one had that, no one was watching it. And then as soon as it came out on Netflix, you know, August, 2020, I'm getting texts and phone calls and people are like reaching out to me like, Hey, I saw <laughs> you and Cobra Kai. <laughs> so that's really fun. And it's just like, it was, it's a really popular show. Yeah. I'm really excited for the new season, you know, the end of this year. Um, yeah, so yeah, sure. I would love to go back in any capacity. Like maybe my kids, she has two kids with her character. Like maybe they go take karate lessons or something. <laughs> yeah. And they join Cobra Kai and they turn yeah. evil. And they, yeah, just... exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Um, so not Cobra Kai related, but you're involved in a few pro projects at the moment, aren't you, including yeah. Terrifier 2? Yes, I'm in Terrifier 2, which I'm hoping is coming out soon. Like, uh, I know there's been some issues with, you know, releasing it. Yeah. Um, I have a short, small little role in that, but like, it's such a cult favorite, Art yes. the Clown. Like, I know the guy who, I met him, um, who plays him, and it's just like such a fun Thing to see if especially if people are horror films and like you know those scary movies yeah when it's i first came across the film it was incredible especially for yeah. the small budget he had and now oh, so yeah. Yeah. yeah so you've obviously seen the first film do you think it like i know you can't talk about much about it but do you think it's doubled in scale in regards to cast and all that sort of stuff yeah i think so definitely okay right cool um yeah there's definitely i mean i I was like, I was only allowed to see like a little small part of it, but I right. think based on the first film for sure. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's got to it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger, just, better, scarier. Yeah. <laughs> that's what everyone loves. So, cause yeah. More really terrifying. Yeah. 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 More gruesome. Yeah. From, really? from what wow. I've heard, cause I know a couple of friends um, who are, who are in the film too. So based on like what I've seen from their behind the scenes pictures, cause oh, we yeah. really like you know, it's hush hush with Damien. Like he doesn't want, you know, anything to get out, which I totally respect, but yeah. just what I've seen with different characters, I'm like, wow, okay, good to know. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to it anyway, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, me too, I'm excited. <laughs> Hopefully they'll do a premiere in New York or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, so obviously you've been involved with a lot of roles, a lot of different products. So what are some of your favorite roles to have done over the years? Oh, I did like one of my favorite roles ever, uh, was a theater role. I played Nellie Bly, who, if people don't know who she is, she was a real person in like the late 1800s. She was an investigative journalist. Okay. And she basically, you know, talked her way into working for Joseph Pulitzer of, you know, the Pulitzer Prize. Yeah. He ran the newspaper back then. Um, and she just had this amazing life and just based on her own like bravado and like opening doors for herself. And she wanted to do a story on, you know, an insane asylum that yeah. was on, it's now Roosevelt Island. So she just like convinced them that she was crazy. So she got locked up in this insane asylum mm. and like experienced it firsthand. And then she was, you know, came out and wrote about it and exposed them. And then there were changes made. So I played this part and it was like a three hour play. I think I memorized 120 pages of dialogue. I was in basically wow. <laughs> every scene of this show minus maybe two or three. Um, and it was just so fun, especially playing a real person. Like I love like, cause you yeah. can get to dig a little bit deeper. Um, and you know, like she's buried in New York and it, I did come down with the flu during that performance. <laughs> like it really took a lot out of me and I had, you know, I, had to keep the show going so I kept performing um like really sick but I just you know you just that's what you do so yeah, it was just so, like yeah. such a like fun and rewarding experience yeah well that's amazing did you not have a stunt yeah. double then not stunt double. not stunt double uh did you not have like a, a standing no person? there are no no uh understudies 
that's it. That's the word. That was looking for. Yeah. So it's like, um, it was a smaller theater. Um, and yeah, no understudy. So that's oh. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so now I kind of know, like, okay, after, because it's a long show. I was getting out at maybe 11 o'clock at night. You just, and it, it was in February in New York and you're riding yeah. the subway. And this was before COVID. So no one was wearing masks. You know, now we kind of know wear a mask in the winter around on public transportation. Yeah. Wash your hands a million times. Um, it's just, you know, when you're around a lot of people in New York, you're going to catch something. Yeah, it was a crowded place. It was bad before, yeah. as you said, before yeah. the COVID and all that stuff. So, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so, what would you say are some of your biggest ac- accomplishments up to this point as an actor? Um, I think basically just going from like when I look back on when I first started my journey, I really had like nothing. I started with zero, I had yeah. no really idea how to navigate this industry. I just, you know, I got into some good classes in New York with some of like the best teachers studied, you know, I remember running around to any audition that would take me yeah. and just auditioning for anything and everything, um, being really nervous, but like having to overcome that. So I think just going, I mean, it's been like over 10 years now, um, just like starting from that zero point of having nothing and then just like learning, absorbing, practicing and then you know booking this role on Cobra Kai which has been like my biggest thing to date um yeah. I think that's like my biggest accomplishment yeah because for you as an actor and you know other actors know this you audition for so many things I have auditioned for so many like high pro- high profile movies and shows and yeah you want to book them all but you don't so. <laughs> yeah, yeah but I suppose you've been part of plenty of shows to get your name out there and to continue the process, I suppose. So that helps you out yeah, a lot. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what are some of your other interests? Would you like to write, direct, uh, produce down the line? Yeah. So I'm actually, I've been producing for a couple years now okay. and I'm, you know, I'm kind of have this like type A side to me where I, I love numbers. You know, I have a degree in economics. I was good at math. So I love numbers and all yeah. of that budgeting, um, making things happen. Like as a producer, it's like, you're always putting out fires. You're making sure the wheels are turning and they're not going to come off. Um, and I'm helping a friend, he's a writer director and he wrote this beautiful script. And there's, you know, it's about a young girl finding her voice through music and there's domestic violence. And okay, um, it's a really beautiful script. And so he asked me to come on board as a producer and um have like a supporting role in it so oh, nice. we've been working on this uh for like over two years oh, wow. and right now we're finally at the point where we are pitching it we just need to get funding now so we have the budget we have the pitch deck we have everything locked and loaded so now we're just getting funding and figuring out how to do that nice that's really cool to hear and i hope you yeah. pull it off really well yeah um so just last couple of questions i just want to say sure. so- what are your goals? Uh, obviously, you said you're obviously working on that. You want to keep getting roles. But yeah. what else would you like to achieve? Um, you know, I would love, I really want to start writing. Like, yeah. I would love to write my own either short film or series. I've had, like, so many ideas pop out. I've kind of put it on the back burner because I had a baby. It was, like, well, first it was COVID. Then I had a baby. And then, you know, you're just tired. And so yeah. I haven't had a lot of time. <laughs> No, I totally get it. it. Yeah. Oh my God. And so now that I think I'm getting back, getting my time back and my life back, I'd love to start like writing. One of my friends just wrote this really cute script. Um, she wrote it, she directed it, and it's like coming out now. And it's it's just really fun to see people making their own work. Yeah. Because that's what you have to do. And it's like a passion project. And I just know so many people around who just, you know, want to collaborate and work on fun things just to yep. have fun. Yeah. So that's my goal for the next year is to write something. Um, it's probably going to be related to motherhood and, you know, raising a crazy baby and all <laughs> that. Yeah. You're at the right time to write that sort of book now, aren't you? So you've, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah How's definitely. it been? How's it been raising a kid? in COVID period and whilst trying to be an actor at the same time. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, COVID, it was kind of nice because I didn't feel the pressure to go out. I, it kind of happened um, at the perfect time because the industry shut down. True, yeah. I really didn't have to tell anyone I was pregnant. I really didn't mess 
I didn't miss out on anything because the whole industry just like was shut yeah. down for a long time. And then now it's more of now that everything's opening back up again, it's just more of a juggle. Like I yeah. will get a couple auditions, you know, I have auditions every week now and I have to do them when she's napping or I have to drive to near, like, I remember one day I had like 16 pages that I had to tape. Yeah. So I like called up my coach and I was like, I need to come see you. I need help with this. And so I went to the city that day, got a babysitter for her. So it's just more, um, it's like you're being a producer. It's just a lot of puzzle pieces yeah. <laughs> that you need to fit in. I need to get the time. I need to get the babysitter. I need to make it all work. And then I need to send in a good audition. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's just a little bit before it didn't seem like I would, you know, get a last minute request, no problem. And then now if I get like a request when I wake up at 8 a.m. and it's due that afternoon, I'm like, oh yeah. my God, I have to like, plan a little bit more so it's not too bad and she's been in a couple auditions with me so it's kind of fun when we get to do them together that's right yeah yeah that's cool it's, it's great to see that you're balancing things so i'm yeah. glad to hear that yeah yeah uh, well thank you sarah it's been great chatting with you today so thank of you of course thank you adam thank you so much for having me you're very welcome and i look forward to seeing some terrifier too obviously in the future yes. and any other projects you're involved with so yeah awesome thank you again thank you uh, take care and enjoy the rest of your day Awesome. You too. Bye.